there are over 20,000 different species of bees worldwide, and here in Canada, you can find over 800 species, including teensy weensy little bees like sweat bees, up to big bees like bumblebees. Most bee stings happen when European honeybees are defending their colony, so their queens and their honey. And actually most native bees are way too small to do any damage and many of them aren't even able to sting you. So in general, if you just give bees their space, then you don't have anything to worry about. So the best plants to support uh wild bees are the native plants. The bees and the plants have co-evolved over millennia and, and um, the plants meet the, the bees' needs and the bees support the plants' needs through pollination and, and other interactions. So um, native, and of course native plants will vary. Which native plants are appropriate for different regions of the country? That will vary because one of the main features of native plants, of course, is that they are specific to a particular area or region. If you have a lawn, for example, which is basically monoculture, take a look at the amount of lawn you have. Consider whether or not you can replace an area of lawn that you don't use replace it with native shrubs. It'll be super easy to look after. It'll provide all kinds of uh, pollen and nectar for, for uh, the pollinators, and it will be really easy to look after. So take a look at your lawn, reduce the amount of lawn. In addition to providing nesting and foraging habitat, which is what most people think of in terms of helping bees, um, for my work as a conservation scientist, having citizen scientists, community scientists out there taking pictures, submitting them to iNaturalist or Bumblebee Watch, that's actually the most helpful thing that someone can do. We are trying to cover large um, areas, looking for rare species of bees. Um, some of the photos that are sending in actually help us track invasive species as well um, and will give us baseline data so maybe in five years or ten years we can see if other species are declining as well. So contributing to any sort of community science program is probably the best thing and just learning about the biodiversity that we have in the region um, and supporting that biodiversity because with climate change we know that having as many species in an area as possible will increase our resilience to the climate breakdown. Uh, so we want to keep as many species, plants, bees, anything else as possible to help us mitigate and adapt to climate change as it's happening. Uh, we've talked a lot about pollination of wild plants and ecological integrity and that kind of thing. Uh, but supporting wild bees and other insects is actually a food security issue as well. Um, not everybody has the money to pay for managed pollinators. They don't have the time or the space to care for their own hives. So by making sure we have a large diversity and a healthy community of wild bees in cities, that's also ensuring that people are able to grow things in their yards, in their community gardens, on their balconies, whether it's tomatoes or herbs or what have you. So there's a really important uh, food security uh, component and the research that has been done shows that wild bees are much better at pollinating most crops than honeybees. And a lot of the times, even if honeybees are brought in to do pollination, the wild bees are the ones doing the work. They just hit the flowers in different ways and they're more tolerant to local weather conditions and things like that. So have it, they, they really are irreplaceable. 